No one vehicle can do everything, but some can certainly do more than others. Like a vehicle with the space of a large SUV and the power of a supercar that can also swim. Meet the Yangwang U8, the Chinese all-electric super SUV that costs 155,000 US dollars. You might not have heard of the Yangwang brand, but you've almost certainly heard of its parent company, BYD. You know, the Chinese electric car company that keeps executives from the likes of General Motors and Volkswagen up at night. This is their Halo brand, the tip of the spear when it comes to their design and technological prowess. That means they've invested quite a bit into making this as impressive as possible, starting with the way it looks. Yes, it is huge, with dimensions very similar to that of the Land Rover Defender 110, if you don't include that 30 centimeter spare wheel mount on the back. But there's more to making a luxury SUV than just size. There's also the small matter of design. From the diamond-like grille insert to the huge daytime running lights, the front end of the U8 is a mass of visual jewelry. According to chief designer Wolfgang Egger, this design language is called TimeGate, and it's inspired by none other than the universe itself, with each of these individual points representing a star within that universe. And there is some deeper meaning behind that bling. The daytime running lights are reminiscent of the Chinese character Ding, which can mean either throne or, more metaphorically, the concept of state power itself. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that this is an undeniably beautiful design, but I do think it's undeniably distinctive. There's no deeper metaphorical meaning to those three humps over the windshield right there. The one in the middle, that's one of the three LiDAR units on this vehicle. The one to the left and right, well, they're empty. That's because Yang Wang says they've put them there in order to give owners the option to install whatever they want. Auxiliary lights, for example. Of course, auxiliary lights are illegal here in China, as they are in so many other places in the world, but it's not illegal to give you a place to put auxiliary lights. There's also a LiDAR unit on each flank, but that's not the first thing you're going to notice about the U8 from the side. No, instead you'll probably notice that the profile looks quite a bit like a Land Rover Defender. Credit where credit is due, however, that only applies to the overall shape and not the details. For example, the Yangwang team uses these strakes on the back of the front and rear wheel wells, as well as that silver element there in front of the D-pillar in order to give the car a sense of forward momentum. These black strakes also have the added benefit of helping to better integrate the LiDAR unit here, as well as this camera. The silver ones back there also have some very subtle LED strips that can be used to display the state of charge, the battery level for the vehicle when it's charging. The U8 you're looking at right now is the luxury version. That means it has standard 22-inch forged wheels wrapped in 275R50 all-season tires, front and rear. If you were to get the all-terrain version, you would get 20-inch wheels wrapped in bigger all-terrain tires. The rear design of the U8 does an admirable job of echoing the same themes as the front. Note the repetition of the stars in the LED taillights, as well as the overall shape of that Chinese character that I mentioned before. The giant 30 centimeter thick full-size spare wheel mount will be optional at some point, but for now, you can't delete it from the U8. Yang Wang also says they're eventually going to offer a tow hitch package, but they haven't done so yet. Seems like a pretty important thing for a vehicle like this that's supposed to be going off-road. You might want to bring a trailer. While I'm back here, I might as well talk a little bit about the Yang Wang brand name and the logo. The word or phrase Yang Wang in Chinese means to look up. So look up at the sky, for example, but in a more metaphorical way to look up perhaps to a greater power, maybe for inspiration. The logo is actually the ancient Chinese character for electricity, Din, which makes sense for an electric brand. Behind that spare wheel is a cargo area measuring 10,031 liters with the rear seats up and 2,050 when you lay them down, which you can do at the touch of a button over here. There's also a button for lowering and raising the vehicle's suspension, which you're going to want to do because this is a really high load for. To the left, there is a 12 volt outlet and to the right, a 220 volt. 
There's a reason that load floor is so high, and it has to do with what's underneath the Young Lung U8, starting with the E4 electric motor powertrain. That's the same E4 system that's found underneath the Young Lung U9 electric supercar. That means four electric motors, two in the front, two in the rear. In this application, each of those motors is making 220 kilowatts. If you're keeping track, that's a total of 880 kilowatts and 1,280 newton meters of torque, aka 1,200 horsepower and 950 pound-feet. Thanks to all that power, the UA can hurl its 3,460 kilogram, that's about 7,600 pound curb weight, to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour in just 3.6 seconds. Unlike the Yangwang U9, however, the U8 is not a pure EV. It's actually an extended range electric vehicle. That means up front here, it has a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine that acts as a generator. It does not power the wheels. Instead, it just generates electricity for the four electric motors and a 49.05 kilowatt hour LFP blade battery pack. According to Yang Wang, this thing is capable of a pure EV range of 180 kilometers on the CLTC cycle. That's not a terribly impressive number, no doubt due in large part to that gargantuan curb weight, but throw in the 75 liter fuel tank and Yang Wang says you can achieve a combined range of 1,000 kilometers. Thanks to those four electric motors, the UA can control each wheel independently, which means it can do tank turns. If you're wondering, does this chew up your tires? The answer is yes, but you know, you gotta pay the cost to be the boss. But as someone very smart probably said one time, power is nothing without control. And so the Yangwang U8 combines all of that power with a double wishbone front and rear suspension. But that's not what makes it special. What makes it special is its adjustable hydraulic suspension called Desis P. Yes, I said hydraulic, not air suspension. Desus P can adjust vehicle height by up to 15 centimeters and can change its stiffness in a matter of milliseconds based on the information it gets from scanning the road ahead. But that's not especially unique among Chinese vehicles. What is unique among all cars on sale today is its ability to compensate for things like sudden tire blowouts. It's like the hydraulic system on the Citroen DS from the 1960s, only smarter and more adjustable. The combination of E4 and Desis P is also what allows for the U8's other eye-catching ability, swimming. Once the U8 detects that it has entered deep water, it will automatically activate emergency float mode, which turns off the engine and closes air intakes and windows, but opens the sunroof, allowing for a quick exit. In this mode, the U8 can stay afloat for up to 30 minutes and move through the water at up to 3 km per hour using the spinning of its wheels for propulsion and steering. Yang Wang obviously doesn't recommend using the system on a daily basis, so the U8 won't be replacing your commute by ferry anytime soon. They do recommend that you get your U8 inspected at a Yang Wang dealership as quickly as possible after each time you activate float mode. Oh, and since float mode turns off the four-cylinder generator up front, make sure you have plenty of juice in your battery before going for a swim. A float time of 30 minutes probably feels even shorter once you're stranded with no power to move your wheels. I've heard of a driver-focused cockpit before, but the U8 is the first driver and passenger-focused cockpit that I have ever seen. Just look at the way the dashboard wraps around the two front seats. It also has an extremely unique center screen, not because of its size, which is 12.8 inches, but because it has a convex or outward curve to it. This is not the type of screen that you can just pick out of a parts supplier's catalog, and I imagine BYD spent a lot of money developing it just so it would fit smoothly into this curved dash. The same goes for the 23-inch instrument cluster and matching 23-inch passenger screen, both of which have been designed to complement and not conflict with the dashboard design. The left side of that instrument cluster is also a touchscreen, where you can control features like the lights and the standard heads-up display. 
as with the front end design, I'm not going to sit here and say it's undeniably beautiful, but it does feel special. It also feels luxurious. Almost every surface that you can touch is covered in either real leather or Alcantara, including the entire headliner. There's also a wood called Sapelli, which apparently comes from tropical regions of Africa. There's huge pieces of it on the door and here on the center console. What I'm trying to say is, this is not one of those looks like Bloomingdale's, feels like Walmart type of things. The steering wheel of the Yonglong Yu, it is a pretty standard affair in terms of design, except for two areas. The first is these paddles here on the back. These are used to turn on the driver assistance system for the vehicle. They seem to really not do anything other than that, and both sides do the same thing. Honestly, I think it would have been easier just to have it all controlled here on the steering wheel and maybe use these for changing driving modes or regen settings, but oh well. What I do get, and in fact what I love, are these two wheels here at the bottom of the steering wheel. These are used to change your driving modes. On the left, you have your on-road driving modes, your, let's see, uh, sport mode, uh, eco mode, comfort mode, and then on the right you have another wheel that's used to change into your off-road modes, your sand and snow and mud modes. I love these because, well, first of all, you don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel in order to change your driving settings, and you can also change them from either the back or the front, like this. It's a very creative solution for this problem. Below this beautiful curved screen is a set of physical buttons. On the far left, we have the E4 button. If I hit that, that opens up your options for your different off-road modes. It also allows you to do tank turns and enter competition mode. Competition mode is the only way to get the fastest 0 to 100 km per hour time in this vehicle. Next to that is the button for automatic parking. And then over here you have some Chinese characters. This is Yun Nian. Yun Nian is the Chinese name for the desis suspension system. So Yun means cloud and Nian is the old Chinese character for a vehicle, more specifically for the emperor's carriage, the vehicle the emperor, or rather the carriage the emperor would have been carried around in. Over here you just have some buttons for your air conditioning and the on and off button for your screen. If I hit that Yun Nian or Desis button, it opens up a menu here for the suspension settings, specifically the ride height. So it will show not only the current height of the vehicle in that current suspension setting, it will also show you the maximum ground clearance at that setting. Down below we have another series of toggle switches. These have more to do with the off-road settings for the vehicle, the, the equipment for off-roading. So you've got your locking front diff, your locking rear diff, uh, over here is the adjustable height here, and then this is for turning off the traction control or the ESP. In the middle, you do have an on and off button for the engine, which interestingly, you don't really need. Once you get into the car, it will, just like most modern electric cars, turn on on its own if you have the key with you. But if you were, for example, to be out camping and you wanted to use the V2L or vehicle to load system, which is a 6.6 .6 kilowatt maximum, then you would need to turn on the engine and you could use this button to do that. Working our way backwards, here we have two 50 watt wireless charging pads, cup holders, not very exciting, but behind that is the center console cubby, which isn't just a cubby, it's actually a heated and cooled storage area. It can go from anywhere to 6 to negative 6 degrees Celsius, that's about oh, 21 to 43 degrees Fahrenheit. U8 has a sound system developed by Dynaudio, its name, Evidence. Not a great name for the sound system, I'm not going to lie. BYD has another series that's called Confidence, which makes sense to me. Evidence doesn't sound particularly premium. Either way, on this luxury version, it's got 22 speakers. On the off-road version, it's got 18. If you really want to impress your neighbors, then you better get the optional roof-mounted drone hanger, co-developed with DJI. Not only can it store your drone, it can also charge and then swap in one of the three battery packs that it keeps at the ready. Launch it via the screen and it will follow your U8 from whatever angle you prefer. When you're done filming, hit the return to base button and the drone will automatically land in the hangar. No word on price for this option, but considering the fact that the much simpler drone package on the M Hero 917 costs 14,000 US dollars, I'm guessing the number will be eye-watering. Finally, before we check out the back seat, let me show you one little uh, quirk, if you will. This is the visor, which is very big, very nice for blocking the sun, of course, but it's also 
got a second visor like this. Just in case you were taking this car off-road, maybe a very high altitude place with a really bright sun and it was just in the right position to hit you from the left and the right, or the front rather, you could block both. Ah, the rear seat of the Yang Wang U8. This is a vehicle with a wheelbase of three meters, so I'm not surprised to tell you there is a ton of space back here, both in terms of legroom and, as you can see, headroom. Absolute massive amounts of headroom. This thing is also equipped, the luxury model specifically, with twin 12.8 inch rear entertainment screens, one for either side. These are the exact same screens, as far as I can tell, that were in the Denza D9 MPB that we reviewed. That's not a complaint, they're pretty great. Very easy to use UI and everything. There's also more screens, however. If I fold down the center armrest, there's what appears to be a seven inch center touchscreen here where you can control your seat functions and there are many heated, cooled, and massaging seats in this rear row. There's also a smaller screen down here between the seats. If, for example, you had someone sitting in the middle, you couldn't access that screen. You can still access your air conditioning functions via this small lower screen. Before getting behind the wheel, I had the opportunity to sit shotgun while an instructor took the U8 through a series of obstacles that illustrated its off-roading abilities with an approach angle of 36.5 degrees, a departure angle of 35.4 degrees, and a breakover angle of 25.5 degrees, not to mention a maximum ground clearance of 31 centimeters, the U8 managed to tackle these particular challenges drama-free. Now we're sitting at a 26 degree angle. I find the seat to be pretty supportive at this point. I didn't think that was going to be that important because this isn't a sports car, but it turns out as an off-roader, you still need some really big bolsters. The U8 has front and rear electronic locking differentials, but thanks to its ability to independently manage power at each corner, it doesn't really need them. As far as I could tell, the instructor just pointed it in his intended direction and let the U8 do the rest. So now we're going up this hump, and uh, this is using the hill assist. The driver is not touching the brake, not touching the gas at all. The vehicle is completely in control. It's using its electric motors to very gracefully go over this hump. So now we're doing the hill descent control. Again, the driver is not touching the brake and not touching the gas. Well, the throttle. No, also not throttle, it's an EV. What do you call it? The electric pedal. Accelerator. Before we get behind the wheel of the Yangwang U8, I want to show you guys a little bit of a detail that I really love, and that is the key for this vehicle. Check out this gorgeous piece of solid metal right here. We were told by Wolfgang Egger that a smooth ebony stone like this was actually one of the design inspirations for the design language for the Yang Wang U8 and for the entire Yang Wang brand. So it makes sense that they would have the key, the, the, the key shaped like this. I gotta tell you, the way that it feels and especially the, the weight of it in your hand, this thing is probably one of the nicest keys I've ever experienced. Behind the wheel of the Yang Wang U8, finally. This is a Good news, bad news, great news situation. The good news is that I've turned on the massaging seats and realized that they're not only massaging on the back, they're also massaging on the bottom cushion as well, and it feels fantastic. The bad news is that we're only going to be able to drive the U8 in this closed parking lot area today. The great news doesn't matter, because about a month ago, I got to get behind the wheel of a Yangwang U8 in the city of Shanghai and drive it on public roads so I can still tell you what it's like to drive in the real world. The first and perhaps least surprising thing I'm going to tell you is that this thing is really, really fast. <laughs> I've obviously driven a lot of fast Chinese cars for the channel, but this one is, man, it's just, there's something special about going 
<laughs> this quick in a truck this heavy. It feels just, I don't know, uh, uh, un, un, unbelievably fast. This is an absolutely massive SUV and it drives as such. Even with the advanced DSIS P hydraulic suspension, there's still a ton of body roll. There's also a ton of nose lift and dive when you hit the brakes or hit that accelerator and just take off. What also has in its favor, however, is comfort. This hydraulic suspension is on a completely different level than say, well, the only thing that's even close to competing this when it comes from other Chinese brands is the M Hero 917 that we tested. Now, that's also a really expensive pure electric off-roader, but it's a lot, maybe 30 or 40,000 US dollars cheaper than this car, and you can tell. They're just not on the same level when it comes to the level of comfort and control that you have from behind the wheel. Steering effort, as you'd imagine, even in this sport mode is very, very light, but there is a almost surprising amount of feedback. Not feedback as to what level of contact or grip the wheels have, but like the surfaces that you're going over. I didn't expect that. That would be useful when you were going off-road, I'm sure. Having driven it on public roads, I can say that the NBH levels are very impressive. You can't really hear that front-mounted 2.0-liter turbo 4 very much unless you're in the real competition mode. That's when it's putting out its most power. Even then, it's kind of a background drone. It's not really an obvious noise. Wind noise also at a very low level. This thing's got double pane glass all over, so about as quiet as you would expect. There is, however, one area that I think they could have used some improvement in. That's when you're kind of pushing it to the limits. When I was driving it on Shanghai's public roads, obviously I wasn't on a racetrack, I wasn't pushing it that hard, but when you were going around a corner, you could really feel those four electric motors working, well, not necessarily working together in the way that I would have hoped. There was a little bit more of a conflict between what one wanted to do versus the other. I suspect this is a software issue. This is a very early production vehicle, and they're going to smooth that out, as happens with so many cars. But for now, there is some room for improvement with the way that they've tuned those four motors just to work together. Does this feel like a driving experience that's worthy of 155,000 US dollars? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. And now, as we wrap up this video, I'm going to answer the one question that I'm sure many of you have been wanting to ask. When is the Yang Wang U8 going to go on sale outside of China? The answer is, we don't really know. BYD says they have no specific plans as for when this brand will be exported. All you can do is look forward to it.